me say right from the start that I have always been a fan of Lima diesels. Not all of them, but certainly the better ones, and I have quite a few in my loco stud. With the Class 47 I feel they have captured the look of the prototype really well, and certainly much better than Hornby with their model. I am interested in the overall look of the model and not in the various differences between subclasses etc. But if you must have a specific type of subclass, then the Helgen or Backman models are for you. The detailing is superb, but these models retail upwards of £200, and for that sort of money I can buy four very good used Lima versions at auction. You pay your money, and you takes your choice. I also happen to like the Lima pancake motor. They may be a little noisy at times, but with a decent controller the locos are fully controllable right down to a crawl. The only things I really dislike are the huge tension lock couplings, but these are easily removable if you wish to replace them with something more elegant. But I put up with them, because A they work, B they are compatible with my other stock and C I can't be bothered to change them. Having said all of that I firmly believe that a well weathered Lima diesel looks much more realistic than a shiny pristine model straight out of the box no matter how detailed it is. If it looks good from normal viewing distances when running on a layout then that is good enough for me. Few. Time to get off my soapbox and commence the upgrade. I began by weathering the bogies, chassis and those great big couplings. It is better to remove the body first to avoid getting paint where it is not wanted. The Class 47 body is a clip fit onto the chassis but the buffers must be removed first. They are a push fit on the buffer beam and can be removed easily by gentle pulling and twisting. Once they have been removed, simply run a fingernail around the bottom edge of the body and it should easily come off. The bogies and chassis were all brush painted with a coat of a dirty brown colour. I used a mix of three Humbral enamels. Numbers 53 gunmetal, 82 orange and 32 dark grey in the approximate ratios of 3 to 2 to 5. Whilst this was still wet I added some dark grey and black to various areas where oil spillage may be present. As with all weathering projects access to photos of the real thing is absolutely essential. The buffer beams and skirts were painted the same colour brown as the chassis as I wanted my model to look work stained. Lima diesels pick up current from one side of the motor bogey and the other side of the trailing bogey. My layout has points which are of the dead frog variety and I run trains slowly. It is essential therefore to add extra pickups wherever possible. Phosphor bronze strip was glued to the underside of the trailing bogey and left to dry. Then a piece of 0.5mm pickup wire was bent to shape so that the ends bear lightly on the backs of the insulated wheels on the bogey. This was soldered to the phosphor bronze strip and a connecting wire, the yellow one in the picture, was also soldered to the strip. This wire was passed through a hole in the chassis and the other end soldered to the motor bogey. The first stage of weathering the body was to mix up a dirty brown mix slightly different to that of the chassis. Using a flat brush this was dry brushed on the lower body sides and various grills. The paint was sparingly applied using vertical strokes 
to simulate dirt, rust and other stains, some of which may have run down the sides due to the laws of gravity. Again, keep looking at pictures of your chosen prototype and paint what you see, not what you think you see. On some diesels the blue paint looks to have faded in places and you can see what I presume is the undercoat showing through. This may be the effect of sunlight on blue paint, or it may be due to frequent visits through the washing plant, although I doubt it. Whatever the reason, it can be replicated by more dry brushing. This time I used a lighter version of rail blue by adding white to it. The cab windows were masked off with a masking fluid before starting to dirty the ends of the loco. I applied a thin wash of a dirty brown colour all over the front and window frames, not forgetting the side windows and doors. Once this was touch dry, most of it was removed with a cotton bud lightly moistened with thinners. Whilst the cab windows were still masked, I turned to the roof, which was airbrushed with a darkish grey colour. The body sides were not masked off as I didn't want a hard join to show. By keeping the airbrush directly over the roof, I was able to minimise any overspray onto the body sides. At this stage, a light airbrushing of grime was sparingly applied to the sides and ends to blend everything together. Once all this was dry, the masking fluid was removed from the windows. The layout on which the loco is to run is set in 1979, by which time head codes indicating train type and destination had been phased out. Ultimately, they were replaced with perspex sheets showing two large dot marker lights. I use marker head codes obtained from precision labels and excellent they are too. The completed loco with marker dots fitted. And that's it. A few simple improvements making a lovely Lima loco even better. Here it is on my Cornish layout pastiche. And finally, some shots of it in action hauling the evening milk train from St Earth. I hope you've enjoyed this video, but that's all for now, see you next time.